Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hello. Good, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay. Uh, shall we start our class? Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So in our last class, we were trying to uh, understand load balancer, right? What is load balancer? How it works? All those things we have seen, right? But actually, in companies, we are not using that load balancer. Okay, we are not using that. I mean, we are using load balancer, but that that concept we are not following. That particular concept we are not following. Why? Because first, let's try to understand the drawbacks that we are getting in that particular concept. So what we did in our last class. We created one load balancer, and uh, we launched some web servers. To you can add any number of servers. There, there is no limit. You can add as many number of servers that you want. Okay, so I have added two web servers. Now load balancer is distributing traffic to both servers. That is fine. But here the problem is, here the problem is, what if I lose my both load both web servers? If I lose both, then what do you do? You add one more web server. Suppose I want to add some thousand web servers due to heavy load. You attach all these servers one by one. Manually, you launch server, OAS, you know, select all eight options, OAS, CPU, RAM, that, you know, EBS, number of servers. You do all those things and you attach one by one. You install web package, you run all commands. So you remember my demo. In my demo, I said, you know, uh, due to heavy load, that 20, January 25th, 26th, that example which I have been right. Okay. So is it, I want, within one day, I want to launch 1,000 servers. Assume that I'm launching a new product. I'm giving discounts on that day. Today, I'm giving discounts. So today, I want 1,000 extra servers today. I, I didn't want yesterday because yesterday there was no discount. Today, I want to give discount. That means number of buyers will be more. So the request will be more. Web traffic will be more. So load will be more, correct? So to distribute that load, to sustain that load, I want I, two are not enough. I want thousand more servers. So is it possible to launch thousand more servers one by one, manually one by one? Correct. Again, tomorrow I don't want again. So you terminate all servers one by one. Hmm? That that you do manually one by one? No, that is not possible. That is impossible. So every now and then I can't monitor right. What how many servers are they? whether all are working or not. If any issue is there, you know, you troubleshooting and all. Suppose, you know, 20 servers are down. You go to all 20 servers, you verify whether the file is missing or not, why it is not running, ports are opened or not. You do it one by one. No, that we are not doing. That is impossible. But when you, when you go to a big, big companies in a larger scale, no, manual intervention, that's impossible. Troubleshooting, you can't get that much of time to troubleshoot. So that's why we are not using this setup. Instead of this, we are going to use a concept called auto scaling. We are going to use a concept called auto scaling. Okay. So everything should be done automatically. Scaling, scale up and scale down should be happened automatically. That means simple what we are going to do. Simple. Here, we keep only one thing that is load balance. The only thing that we do manually that is load balance. Now auto scaling we launch servers automatically. Suppose already I have two servers are there. If load is more than 90 in these two, 90, 80, whatever you give the number. If load is more than 90, okay. See when you know the number of requests are more, then gradually CPU percentage increases. That because of load. Okay. So when that CPU utilization is more than 90, then automatically AWS will launch one new server. Automatically, it will install operating system. Okay, it will select all options, you know, CPU, RAM, hard disk, everything. Then it will install web package and all. It will create that file, web content and all. It will start service. Then automatically it attaches that server to load balancer. And load balancer will distribute the traffic. 
everything happens automatically okay so if load is more than 19 this for this week one more so more than 19 this for one more one more like that I keep on going continues you know as per the if load is less then you will remove this so again it will again it will like that that means scaling happens automatically whether that's a scale up or scale down, increasing or decreasing okay that happens automatically everything should be done automatically that is what auto scaling. that is what we are doing that means literally after you setting up this auto scaling you need not worry about this you can simply sleep everything will be taken care automatically you don't even need to worry about this okay today you are giving this course today simply you can sleep everything will be done by auto scaling automatically got it that is how it works okay so and you will get notifications every now and then after every time it launches you will get notification hey auto scaling launch one new so if it terminates you will get one notification so that is how it works complete automation and aws became so popular because of this particular service okay all major companies are using this and in fact in companies we are using this okay so let's see how it is going to work. Guys, please respond. You understood? What is this auto scaling? Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So let's uh, do it. Let me explain. I mean, theory is a lot of theory that we have to understand. Then only you understand practicals. Okay, okay guys. So you understood that auto scaling launches server automatically. That's what you understood. Fine. Okay. But here my question is, see, assume that I have only uh, some two servers are there. Only two servers. Ah, okay. I don't have any servers. I have just load balance. That's it. I have only load balance. Okay. Now, as I said, auto scaling launches one new server, right? This is a server. That server should have which operating system? Please respond, guys. That server should take which operating system? Linux. Linux. That to which Linux? Any Linux. Okay. Reconfigured. Fine. Reconfigured OS. Okay, fine. Uh, which you know instance? Amazon type Linux. Okay. Which instance type it takes? T two micro, T two small. Which one? T two micro, sir. How do you know? Actually, anything, sir. Anything it takes. It takes. I think anything. you can take, sir. You regarding. Okay. When we creating instance, we have to give. What about hard disk? How, how much hard disk it takes? We have to reconfigure uh, before uh, uh, use the auto scaling concept. Right. Absolutely correct. See, it's not like you know it. It does everything automatically, but. Some other place you need to mention these inputs, which OS it should take, which configuration it should take, uh, RAM, hard disk, everything. You have to mention because how does auto scaling know that I need to take Amazon Linux only? How can you say Amazon Linux only? Why can't Red Hat Linux? Why can't you know Ubuntu? Correct or not? Okay. Why only T2 micro? Why not T2 small? Correct or not? So we need to mention all these things in one place. By reading the details, then auto scaling launches new server by reading those details. Understanding, right? So here also, see here, there is one place where we need to mention the things clearly, where we need to define all the things. Okay, let me show you. See, I need to mention, see, for example, assume that I'm mentioning, uh, okay, as you said, Amazon Linux, see? Amazon See, I have mentioned this one in one place. I have written, I have selected this one. So whenever auto scaling launches any new server, that server will have Amazon Linux only. So you need to mention some other place. Okay. T2 micro I have mentioned. So whenever auto scaling launches any new server, first it read the details from there. Okay. I have mentioned T2 micro. So every server will have T2 micro only. Every server. You can't have Sai first to three source T2 micro, remaining three T2 small T2 medium. No. All servers will have the same configuration 
as per the details you mentioned here. You can't have, say, I want uh, five Amazon Linux servers, five Red Hat Linux. No, that is not possible. Okay, all sources will have similar kind of configuration. What are you define here? Okay, here I have mentioned, uh, okay, root drive of 8 GB. So every server will have only one drive of 8 GB only. Okay, suppose if I give 10, every server will have 10 GB. That's all. And which package it should install? So we need to mention all those commands. Installing web package, creating file, you know, starting service. Which package it should install? What file it should keep? In that which container it should keep? How does it know? So we need to define everything here. Okay. And what else we mention here? Security groups. What are the ports should be opened? Correct or not? Whether it is SSH, HTTP, HTTPS, we need to mention. And what else we mention? Key pair. Correct or not? So later on, if at all any issue is there, which key you use to go inside the server? So that you have to mention. So you need to mention all these details. The place where you mention all these details, that place we call launch template. Launch template. Template means simple, guys. See, I have shared one CV, resume. Resume with you. Okay, my profile at the end, of course, I'll share so many CVs. Curriculum, vitae you can call, or resume you can call, or profile you can call. You can use any of those. So I'm going to share so many profiles of mine. Those profiles are acting like a template. What do you do? You open that profile and you just modify as per your needs. That is acting like a template. Here also, this one we call launch template, where you mention all details. So whenever auto scaling launches any server, before it launches, it reads those details from launch template. Okay, it, it reads all those details from launch template. According to that, it will launch. According to that. Okay, that is how it works. Okay, few more details we have to mention, correct or not? Like, after launching these servers, they should get attached to which load balancer? I need to mention some other place. See here, you could have many load balancers. Why also we should get connected to this particular load balancer only? So I need to mention this load balancer name so that all servers will be connected to this particular load balancer only. Okay. And what else? How many servers you want? How you want that scale up and scale down happens? For example, I want, see, if CPU iteration is more than 90, okay, before that, we need to mention minimum and maximum number of servers. Like minimum, I want four, 450, whatever, you know, you want, you can mention 10, 15, whatever. Minimum means, see, I'll give one simple example. You have a hotel. You establish one hotel, one shop. Okay, you establish it, but you found no one is coming to your hotel or shop. No one is, no customer is visiting your shop. It doesn't mean that you close your shop. No, right? Whether customer is visiting or not, you keep your shop, hotel, you know, that shop running with minimum groceries. When customer inflow is more, based on that, you know, you, you get more groceries from that shop, you know. Correct or not? You keep things ready. So whether customer is visiting your shop or not, irrespective of customers, you keep minimum number of things ready. You keep minimum number of things ready. Correct. If customer info is more, then you keep more things. Correct. You ask, you conduct, you are conducting one function. Okay. You are conducting one function. You don't know whether customers will come or not. It doesn't mean that you don't keep any chair. You keep minimum number of chairs ready. Correct or not? Okay. So Minimum number of chairs ready. If if you know visitors flow is more, then you you add more more chairs. Correct. Here also, no one is visiting my website. It doesn't mean that we we don't keep any server. No, we keep minimum number of servers always ready, up and running, irrespective of traffic. For example, I'm giving four. That means four servers will be always ready, even though CPU utilization is zero. Still, those will be there. Those will be there forever. These four will not come under scaling part. These will be there. These are fixed. 
okay so i want minimum four on top of that okay on top of that, if cpu duration is more than 90 i want one server should be launched if cpu duration is more than 90 in these four then it will launch one new server okay like that if cpu duration less than 90 it will terminate but up till here only okay here we give maximum also how many maximum number of you want Let's give 10. May big, big company, they give unlimited thousands, you know, millions, billions. Okay, mine is a small, you know, business. I can afford only 10 servers. See, my functions, hall is just pretty small. I can afford only 100 chairs only. Okay, after that, I can't, you know, take the, those that much of crowd. What I do, I keep only those money, maximum. Even though flow is coming, I keep only those chairs only. After that, I'll close the door. Correct, and parking area is there. Okay, if parking is getting full, once it's full, then they close the door. That's okay. It's full. Correct. Here also, I want maximum 10. That means, see, if CPU is more than 19, these five, it will launch one more, one more, one more, one more. Maximum is this one only. These are dead end. 10. That's it. After that, it won't even accept the load. It won't even accept the load. Okay. It won't even accept the load. That, I mean, if you want, you can give. If you don't want, you need not give. That as per the as per your you know affordability, whether you can pay because all these servers are running needs, you have to pay the price. Correct or not? So minimum four I'm giving, maximum ten. So scaling happens at this stage. Pink color you can see. Scale up, scale down happens here only. It won't touch black. That means when CPU utilization is more than ninety in these four. Yes, it will launch this one. Then after more than 19, these five, it will launch more than 19, these six, it will launch more than 19, these seven, it will launch. If it is less than 90, it will terminate this one, this one, this one, this one. That's it. It won't touch black because these are minimum I want. Minimum I want. Got it? That is how it works. Okay. That is how scale up and scale down happens here. Okay. Maximum I have been fine. Now, after that, we need, we need to add a few more things. Correct? Like, you know, uh, which, what name you want to give to all these servers. All servers should have this name only. Okay. And uh, all, all these things we give. Many, many things. Okay. That's it. The place where you mention these things. That to notification, I want notification. Notification should be sent to whom? So, so the, these are some emails. So, the place where you mention these details. That place we call, okay, auto scaling. The place where you mention these details, that location we call auto scale. Okay, so here, before auto scaling launches any new server, it reads information from this one. According to auto scaling details, it will launch. See, in launch template, you give only instance configuration details. Instance configuration: how much CPU cores, which OS, how much RAM, what are the commands to be run in one server. Configuration details. According to that. You know, how many servers you should launch that should be connected to which load balancer? Those details we can we give like that means in a simple terms, in a simple terms, auto scaling before it launches any new server, it reads information from launch template, and according to the details you mentioned, auto scaling it will launch. Okay, so that is how we have to mention we have to define these things once. This is only one time effort. Once you finish, that's it. After that, auto scaling will do continuously without any. Without any delay. Understanding that? That is service. Now, this is one thing, see. And one more thing we have to do, as I said already manually, that is load balancer. You have to create load balancer. Okay. So, total three things you have to do manually. I mean, only one time effort. First, you create load balancer. Then, you define launch template. Then, you define auto scale. These three things. You have to do. Okay. Now what we do, let's do it quickly. We'll do it. What we'll do, I mean, we'll do half till here today. Okay. And remaining half, we'll do it in tomorrow's class. Okay. Now we'll let's do it. Just give me one minute. Let me have some water.
Yeah, done. So we'll do it now. First, we'll create load balancer, then we'll do it. We'll deal with launch template today. Okay, so before we start our lab session, guys, uh, please respond. You understood how it works, everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so yes, let's, sir. Let's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, first, let's create load balancer. Go to AWS account. Sign into the console. Okay. So right now it is showing in Mumbai. Uh, let me verify, do I have any running servers? Okay, we don't have anything here, no problem. So we'll do it here out in this region. Uh, you can see some security groups are there, some key pairs are there. Let me delete all unnecessary things. We don't need all those things. Here, Linux security group, Docker security group. These are my DevOps class related things. Okay. Uh, guys, some of you are uh, sending messages regarding my DevOps class. Okay. This weekend, I'm going to start new DevOps match. This weekend. Okay. So details and all we'll share in the group, in your WhatsApp group. Okay, if you're interested, you can join. We'll share the details, okay, this weekend, demo or something. Okay, fine, you can see here, uh, I have deleted everything, I don't have anything right here. Okay. Now we need load balancer first. So let's create load balancer. That already you know, I need not explain again. Now left side, scroll down. You can see a load balancer, select that. Okay, create load balancer. You know all these things. Okay, so we need classic. Click here. Now give any name to this load balancer. I'll give my load balancer. As I said in uh, in my class, you know these things will be discussed later on in VPC class. There we'll discuss. Okay. Now next. Now we need security group. Correct. See here, we have to understand one thing. Load balancer needs HTTP. My web servers, they need SSH and HTTP both. Okay, because where commands will be executed, right? SSH and HTTP, correct? So what I do, I'll create one, one security group in which I'll open both SSH and HTTP. That same security group I use for load balancer and all web servers. Why to create those many? For you know, load balancer separately, uh, these web servers it means auto scaling servers. Here you can see, as I said, which security group you need to select. So that thing, what I do, instead of creating new one, I'll make use of existing security group, which I created for load balance. Got it? So here, create a new security group. Just uncheck this one. This is a default one. Create a new security group. Here, you give any name. I'll give, uh, okay web security group because those auto scaling servers are web servers only right ultimately those are web servers only uh, let me give any description here you can see first i'm go open, going to open sh i mean you can open there is no sequence first you open http also no problem so here uh, i'll open http both sh and http are there that's it Fine. a load balancer needs only http only but my web servers they need ssh also Instead of creating new security group every now and then, I'm going to make it of existing one, that web security group. That's it. Now next. Uh, you know, this load batch is asking about the secure Lesnar syndrome. We did not buy any security certificate. That's why you can ignore this one as of. Next, coming to health checks. You might be thinking, so if we don't have servers yet, how does load balancer it you know uh, it check health of all servers? How does it check health of all servers? See. Right now, only load bands is it. But later on, servers will be attached. When servers get attached, if servers get attached, that time load bands will check the health. That time. In previous class, first we created servers, then we attached load bands. Now, first we are creating load bands, later on we are attaching servers. Okay. But concepts remain same way. So here, load bands will check that request will go through port 80. It will look for index file. That index file we are going to keep in our web servers. We are going to keep, okay. So response time and all, these I'll give minimum numbers, 2522. 
Okay, that's it. Next, make sure you need to create the same file in all web servers being created by Autoscan. Okay, now next. It is asking to attach instances, but do I have any instances? No, I don't have any instances. That's why me not to attach. Next, key value, that's okay, option. If you want, you can give. Review and create, verify all these things. If everything is fine, then click on create. And close. That's it, my load bands is ready. These are one thing manually that you do. Now coming to next one. Next one, we need to define launch template. We need to define launch template. See guys, earlier there used to be launch configuration. If you see, if you under load balancer section, you can see auto scale, launch configuration and auto scale. Right now we are using launch template, but in place of launch template, earlier we used to use launch configuration. This one, whatever we are defining here, right? Those we used to define here. But now why are we not using launch configuration? Why are we using this launch template here? Because AWS guys, they are working on it. They are modifying some features here. That's why they have removed, I don't know for how many months and all, they have removed this one. Okay, in place of that, they are suggesting us to use launch template. That's why if you want to verify, you can see. If I click here, launch configuration, Okay, somewhere they used to mention here earlier. Create launch configuration. Yeah, now you can see. What is this? See, instead of using launch configurations to create EC2 auto scaling groups, we recommend that you use launch templates to make sure that you are getting the latest features. Got it? And if you want to go to launch template, directly you can click here. You can see they have given the link. That's why launch configuration is not working now as of now. That's why we have to use launch template only. That's why here cancel. Got it? Okay, now let's go to launch template. Here you can see. Click that. Okay, now let's create launch template. Here create launch template. Created. Okay. Now see, we need to select many things, right? Correct or not for OAS and all those things. Now it is asking, hey, Sai, give any name to the template. Give name, give any name to the template. So that from this launch template, you can create any, any number of auto scaling groups, any number of. So that's why first we are going to give a name to this template. Any name, okay, I'll give my launch template. Launch template. Okay, whatever name. Now it is asking to give the version number. Okay, which version? I'll give one. Version in the sense here, in the same launch template also, you can have multiple versions with the different, different subclassification. Okay, multiple versions. Okay, just give any name. Don't worry about that much. Now, here you need to you select this one. Provide guidance to help me to set up template that I can use in auto school. See, in this, you can see many options are there. You don't know which one to select, which one not to select, which one, which options are mandatory, which are not mandatory. That's why if you want to, the, if you want that guide, you can see, click here. Now, I don't know, see, I don't know whether selecting AMI is mandatory or not, I don't know. So what you do, when I click this one, you can see it will show whether it is mandatory or not, see. Yes, now it is saying that, hey, if I, it is required, you need to select. Okay, so it'll show the guide that what are the things which are mandatory, what are things which are not mandatory. Okay, so I'll select this one now. Uh, Amazon machine, which OS that you want? As I said, you need to define everything here. So let's select OS, you know, T2, you know, instance type, hard disk, everything. Now here, okay, you can see Amazon Linux. Okay, I'm going to choose Amazon Linux, the first one. Whatever OS you want, you can choose, that's up to you. Auto scaling will take that OS only. Okay. Instance type. Here you can see. Okay. I am going to choose T2 micro. So that every time auto scaling launches new server, that will have T2 micro only. That's it. Now coming to key pair. Which key pair that you want? Here it is showing. I don't have any key pairs. Okay. As of now. So here we can create a new key pair. You can see. Create a new key pair. Click that. 
Okay. Now here you give any whatever name that you want. Okay. Uh, auto scaling hyphen test. Some I'm name. Rx. What is today's date? Today is nine, right? Nine. Okay. Nine. Nine auto scale. Okay. I'm giving a name called nine auto scale. Now you can see they are asking to choose either PMK or PPK. Nowadays, <clears throat> nowadays directly they are giving an option to directly download PPK. <laughs> you don't need a putty gen to convert PEM to PPK. Directly you can download. Directly you can download PPK file also that you can use in putty. But no, we are using mobile extreme that is very user friendly. That's why we need PEM. Always down PEM only, PEM load, PEM key. So that we can use with mobile extreme easily, right? Create new key pair. You can see auto screening. By using this PEM key, you can access servers which are being launched by auto screen. Okay. So now hit refresh. Yeah, here you can see that is already selected. Nine auto scale key. Now scroll down, come to network, click this. Here you can see it is something, it is talking about VPC and all. Don't worry about all these things. Anyways, as I said, VPC class is there, they will explain clearly. Now what you do here, security groups. If you click that, already we created one security group, you remember? While launching load balancer itself, we created one security group. Correct. So what I'll do, instead of creating new one, if I want, I can create new one. Okay, instead of creating new one, I'll make use of existing security group. You can see web security. Select that. Where SH and HTTP both are already open. Now scroll down. Now storage. Click here. Here, what they're saying here, they are giving 8 GB by default. Okay, they are giving. But something else they are mentioning. What is this? IME volumes are not included in the template unless modified. It is saying that sorry, you have to modify a little bit. Then only those will be modified, included. So what you do here, click that. Now, they are, they are giving 8 GB, let me take 9. Do any modification here, those will be included. Modified, that's it. Okay, so every time auto scaling launches new server, that will have 9 GB hard disk only. 9 GB. Okay, of one drive. If you only can add new volume, that will become D drive like that. Okay. Resource tags or not, here you can see. If you want, you can add any tag, that's up to you. But actually, no need here. If you want, you can add, but no need. Why? Because already here we have given name, right? So, no need. The network interfaces, don't worry. Those you will understand in VPC class. Here you can say advanced details. Click that. In advanced details, if you scroll down, don't worry, many options are there. As you can see, this IAM and all this, we will see when I talk about IAM class. Those things will see later. Don't worry. Just scroll down. Here you can see they are giving user data box. I told you, right, there is one place where you give all commands. I don't know, right, you know, which package should be installed, what are the commands should be executed, which file should be created. So that we need to mention here in this box. So that whenever auto scaling launches any new server, in every server, these commands will be executed automatically. Okay. So let me get those list of commands. Okay. You can see these are the commands. Let me one second. Let me unmute. Yeah. You can see these are the commands. Right? Let me just copy them and paste. That's it. In real time, these commands will be given by Linux and all uh, these DevOps guys. You just simply copy and paste. That's it. Everything, everything will be taken here by them. Okay. Now, now you might be having one more doubt. Sai, right now we are creating one small file having small content. How to deal with big, big files? Don't worry. Those also we are going to see. Okay. Okay. So I have pasted this one. Now seems everything is good. Yeah, fine. Now click here. Create launch template. That's it. Now we have created successfully. Just scroll down and view launch template. That's it. Launch template is ready. Absolutely ready. Okay. 
the launch template. Now, what I need to do by using this launch template, we need to create auto scaling, correct? So, how to do it? Simple. You that your launch template is ready. Now, by using this, you need to create auto scaling by clicking here. From one launch template, you can create any number of auto scaling groups. Okay. So that part actually, even though we have time, that I will explain tomorrow's class on because this is big one. Need elaborated explanation, a lot of explanation is there. Okay, so a lot of things are there which we can't cover in 15 minutes. That's why tomorrow, this part we'll see in tomorrow's class. Tomorrow, quickly, initially, today after this class, I'll delete this load balancer, I'll delete this one. Tomorrow, first 10 minutes, we'll quickly do it this one again so that you will understand easily. And after that, we'll go with this big one. Okay, so that it will take one complete class uh, so that you will understand easily. Okay, because this is the most important class, guys. Okay, so that remaining part we'll see tomorrow's class. So we have 15 minutes time. What we'll do, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Okay, uh, then after that, I'll delete this. Okay, as I said, it's not about exact time, right? It's not about topic. Okay, because I can't break some topics. That is important. Yeah, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, yes. While auto scaling scale up, uh, IP is not same for every OLC. IP and host. I can't hear you. Please, please come in. Hello. Yeah, uh, when we ahead. scale up, uh, at that time, the IPs of all the servers are even same. IPs are all servers? IP of all servers are same while they scale up. No, no. The the, those will be different. Mahindra, just be mute. Mahindra. Mahindra, please be mute. Getting a lot of background. Yeah. So each server will have different, different IP. Each server. Anyways, we need not worry about that one. Right? We need not worry because ultimately we are not going to provide you know, IP access of these servers. We are going to provide load pads or DNS. Name. Correct or not? So every server will have new IP, but that's unnecessary for us. Correct? Aside for load balancer, uh, under the status column, why there is nothing like running or terminated or something? In load balancer, once we create it. Yeah. So yeah. State, state. Yeah, the third one. Uh, we'll check. Top, top, top. Name, my LB. Yeah, DNS name, yeah. Under state, yeah. See, we don't have any servers right as of now. No, yesterday also, uh, there were nothing under the state. Ah, cha, 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 cha. This one straight. See, as of now, they are not giving stop option to load balance. See, you have to answer one thing. If you go to actions, okay, do you find any option to stop? No, no, no. You can only delete. Okay, okay they are not giving. I don't know why they are not giving. So here, if you can see the entry here, that means it is running. Okay. You need not to, they need not to mention that, hey, it is running, it is stopped. No. The option st stop itself is not there. If you are seeing load balancer here, means which is running. If you okay. delete, means you can't see the entry. Maybe in future, they may add that stop option also. Got it? So okay. if I delete this uh, load balancer, this entry also will be deleted immediately. Got it? I'm going to show you now. Yes. Yeah. Sir, uh, actually, that uh, condition if the CPU usage is less than 90, do we need to give any condition or? Uh, yeah, we, we have yeah. to give, we have to give condition that we are going to give in tomorrow's auto scaling part. Okay. Okay. We, we have to give condition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sai, one more thing. Uh, uh, in uh, in real time, there are lots of projects are running right in one server, right? If we scale up, then all the data will move uh, to the next yeah. scale up server or? Uh, Means we have to uh, give no, 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 no. See, one by one all the actually, what actually happens see, in real time right now, we are at the beginning stage only. We with, to this, we add a lot of decoration, so many things. What actually happens, the web server will be there in all servers. It's not being mute, being mute. I will explain. See, be, be mute. In real time, this is not the only the thing. We add many things for that you should know. Database server, before the rule 53. So many, lot of setup pieces. Let me just ex briefly explain. Okay. In real time, what actually we do? 
these are load banks these are my web servers in all web servers where you can see the web content web content but actually back end we attach one database so database server to this one to all web servers and all load banks will be connected to web servers and load banks will be connected to root 53 at root 53 level we take user friendly domain name like www.google.com facebook.com like that that we buy at root 53 that we link to load banks or dns name because load banks or dns name we can't give to customers how come they remember this one that big lengthy dns name right so that we attach to load banks the web servers will be attached to load banks the database server will be attached to load web servers all web servers will have common one back end one database server so boy you are booking one train ticket train ticket the rctc website web page and all right that actually will be here focus on my pink color that will be here that same web page is will be there in all web servers common when you book a ticket when you book uh, a train ticket your request will come from here You type irctc.co.in, the request will come here. From here, it will come to load balancer. Load balancer will distribute the traffic. It may send your request to any of the web servers. Assume that it is sending to fast web server. Okay, okay. There you can see all details. You know, you you enter your all details and all. Your details and everything will be stored at backend database server. All details actually will be stored in database server. Right now we have small content. My Google. That's why we are keeping in web servers. back in your data your phone number your details your train ticket every details of yours will be stored in database okay next day morning after two days you want to take the print out then your request will come here now focus on blue color your request will come here come here load banks load banks may send a request to any web server assume that it is sending to this web server back end that will be routed to same database server where you have details why it will send to same location in database server because you are logging you logged in by using your own credentials so those details will be stored here so when you log in with those credentials only then you will be redirected to the same location where your ticket is so you take the print okay after today you want to take one more like that, that all web servers will have one common database server where your details will be stored web server is a place where you can see only that website web page the colors and all everything that they keep in all web servers all web servers have common website whenever auto scaling launches any new server what actually happens launch server will launch back end that will be connected to same database server so ultimately data remains same right that is so so this is what we are going to see in upcoming class because we have database module is there we have some services root 53 is there in most importantly vpc is there networking and all that's you know so in between application server is there so many things are notification part is there monitoring is there okay n number of things are there so that's why by the end of this course you will get complete clarity and in that project we are going to include all services whatever we are discussing right those are small small things okay finally we'll integrate all those things we'll make up a big thing what is front end till back end that is what we are going to Do it. Understood. At least. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You got an idea. At least, right? Bit. Bit. Yes. 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 Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Auto scaling up happens uh, when it checks overall usage of all four servers. Like yes, all four. Average. Yes, average. Here. here, in all four, if it is ninety, that means here ninety, here ninety, here ninety, here ninety. Then it will launch. Now you might be thinking, say, so what if we are forty only? That will never be forty because load balance uh, it balances the load, it distributes the load. So if it is ninety here, here also ninety only. It won't send forty percent here, eighty percent there. No, it will distribute equally. So always, in all so load will be same average. So in all so it is ninety, then it will launch new so. Here also, if it is, see here 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 ninety. Ninety, ninety, ninety. Then load balancer launching new server. Then load balancer, you know, will distribute this existing traffic to this one. Okay. Sir, so that means, like, uh, like when it happens in the 
fifth number, uh, like uh, say eighty five percent is the user. Uh, please write, uh, sir. Can you please write here? Uh, eighty five percent. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 sir. In the fifth, yeah. Then what happens? Sir? No, no. See, I'll I'll give that. You know, calculate. Actually, this calculation is not needed for you. No, let me you and expect. See. So right now I have given condition of ninety, right? Year ninety. Year ninety. Year ninety. Year ninety. Now in all four, it's equal into ninety. More than or equal to ninety, how again? So ninety. That means auto scaling launched new so. Then what actually happens? See here. See. Or ninety plus ninety plus ninety plus ninety. Four nineties. You know this three uh, sixty, right? Three sixty by five because one server is adding, right? Correct or not? Okay, okay, okay. So what is this? Okay. Correct. Seventy two. Correct. Then in all then the servers. In all servers here. Seventy two. Seventy two. Seventy two. Seventy two. Seventy two. Got it equally. Right. Yes. Then, then load is increasing slowly. All reaches eighty, 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 eighty. Then ninety, 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 eighty. When it reaches ninety again, it will launch one new server. Got it. Yes. That kind of mechanism that they are following at back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yes, I got it. Yeah, that is so. Thank you. Sir, is there any option to mention if the CPU average rate is greater than ninety? Instead of launching one server, we can launch two or more. Yeah, we can do it. Big big company, that's what they do. They don't launch one one. See here, I'm giving. If I if CPU is more than ninety, if I give five, it will launch five five set of five five, one five one more five one five like that it will launch. And big big company, they give big number here, and also they take higher configuration. They don't take T two micro eight GB no. They give higher configuration. That's how you know their you know servers can sustain the load. We can very well do it, and people they do it. They are doing it. Okay. Yeah. Sir, one more doubt. Yes, please. Sir, can we use more than one template? Like uh, we are we are willing. No, to... no. At a time for one auto scaling, there will be only one template. Because see, while launching, whether you should follow which template. In one template, you are giving Amazon Linux. In another template, you are giving Red Hat. That server should take which OS? Correct or not? There is a conflict, right? Yes, sir. That is. Sir. See, for one load bank, sir, there will be one launch template. There will be one auto scaling group for one entire one website. Suppose one more website is there, one more. For that, you have one new load bank, sir. Correct. For that, you can have same template and one new auto scaling. Yes, sir. Template is what? Just a basic giving some information. Hey, you follow this one. So for other website also. If whenever it launches, it will take. Uh, it will use this setup like that. Logically correct or not? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, that's all. Sir, so, so in load balancer, is it possible that we keep the index dot html in one in uh, Linux, one in uh, Solaris or SuSE? Yeah, that is, that, is that is possible. That is possible. That is possible because in all Linux operating systems, that var triple html folder remains same. All are same. No problem. But not possible for Windows. But uh, that is not possible for Windows. Okay. Either you should have either entire Linux setup or Windows setup. You can't have half Linux or Windows. And here or here in auto scaling, you can't have. I want to some server, some other Linux, some more Red Hat. No, because whatever you give, all servers will have the same. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got the point. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, uh, already we let's say we have uh, configured this uh, auto scaling. Also, we have the load balancer. Let's say we have five server, and if in case the uh, CPU load is greater than ninety, it is increasing. Fine, one more server is adding. Then, how do we know that uh, which request is going to the particular server? Let's say five uh, person is there. They are sending that, the request. No, no, that that we can't verify. So, we can verify. We can monitor the load. What is the current traffic and all? We can't so, verify that which request is being routed to which server. No, that is not possible. Google also they don't. They equally don't distributed, right? So traffic, uh, but uh, equally they... distributed. But you know, see, now I'm typing Google. Yeah. My request is being routed to one server. Again, if I hit refresh, that might get routed to some other server. Correct or not? Correct. That, that we don't monitor. That no need also. So we are we are not knowing that uh, it is. We don't good. even need also because we have thousands of requests, lakhs of requests will come from customers. 
Why to monitor which request is routing to which server? Ultimately, whether what is your current load, correct or not? So, is there any way, like I mean, it's logging somewhere that it, this request is going to this server or other server? Something no, like that. that kind of logging is not there. But other types of some other loggings are there. When it launches a new server, what actually happened? Which service is running there? Those kind of monitoring is there. But whatever is there, that is not possible. Okay. And one more I thing. Say. Like uh, in this, uh, we know that we are uh, defining the security group. We are opening the HTTP port SSL. But in the layman term, what we define actually, if someone will ask, like what is security group? Security group is it deals with ports. Port is like a door, correct? Yeah. So security groups means ports. It's a group of ports. For that, they are calling, uh, they are giving an input security groups. Hey, oh, please open SSH uh, port. That where we open in security group. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, Sai. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, as we discussed, like uh, we created a template, right? So, each server we are going to be, it is going to be divided like 90, 90, 90. So, whenever it is going to take a new server, so it is going to be informed to the user or? Yeah, we, we, not to the user, customer, to us. Customer. It will inform us, hey, Sai, I launched a new server. So, and so, time, so, and so region everything it will mention clearly with you'll get big email automatic emails you'll get okay fine fine okay yeah. thank you any more doubts so the alert mechanism also there sir. i mean like which server is down to to whom it will go to the first of all no need the server is down yeah because of any issue okay so the condition it's mismatching correct See, load is more than 90, it should launch a new server, it launched, but server went down. So load is more than 90 here. That means it needs one server, which is not available. So it will, if, because of reason, if it goes down, it will remove from the list, auto-scaling automatically. Detach from load balance, so in place of that, it will launch a new server. So auto-scaling is there, as well as auto-healing also is there. When load is more, it will launch a new server, as well as it will launch one new server in place of crashed server. So we need not to go and verify what went wrong, why it went, no. Once it is out, means it's out. It will launch new. Correct or not? That is so. So auto healing also. Uh, Got it? No, sir. So when, when the load is, uh, uh, I mean, dec uh, okay, no. increasing, uh, by decreasing also, they, uh, we will get any update? Yes, you will get notification. Yes. Oh. For every activity, uh, you get notification. So Hmm. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, any please. limit? Uh, any limitation of the server increasing? Uh... That's why that 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 you mentioned here. There is no limit. You can use whatever number you want. Okay. Got it? Oh, okay, okay. Rahul Verma, okay. uh, when we get complete notes for this module or important questions, yeah, sir. Not not now. Okay, you will you will get you will get because these are interrelated topics. Okay. Don't worry about that one as of any uh, more doubts. Uh, there is any service for AWS for file integrity. Which one? For file integrity means what we are doing in on server means what files are changing. That try we have therefore tracking that things. No, no, no. For that you will understand. Actually, we we keep. No, no, for, that's a different way. Things are there. Wait, wait. Just you know. Uh, in nice next services, you will understand where we keep storage, you know, storage services, all those things we discuss. All files and all we keep in storage. From there, we pull all those things to here. So that you will understand that one. Oh, that's not it. I mean, I wanted to monitor that which user has changed the file or what changed. Oh, yeah, that, that kind of logging is there. That is there. For that, also, we have one more service. Each and everything will be tracked. Who did what at oh. what time from which computer? Everything at what time? Everything. Which region? Yeah, actually, everything. that thing I have, I need to configure in my environment. So that's that, how. I that work. is it. That is it. Okay. okay. Uh, so, what is the name of that service? Uh, cloud Trail. Cloud Trail. But Cloud Trail is for that uh, login purpose, no? It is AWS who has logged in for that not, thing, no? Not only logged in. No, no, no. It will track everything. It will track each and every user activity. It's kind of, you know, CC camera on top of your head. 
What turn you do? Everything will be will be files also it will check. Nah, what file has changed at what time and who has changed user has. Yes, everything, everything. We have that service. I will explain that. Okay, okay, thank you. I say I have one doubt. Yes, please. Uh, and more than ninety percent traffic is a fixed criteria or we enter. No, no. Whatever you know, number you want, you can go. I can go eighty, seventy. That's up to you. I have taken just an example. Okay. Okay. So one more doubt. Yeah. Uh, uh, the database server also auto scaling. Yeah, I'm going to teach. That is a, that we discuss in database module. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, here in auto scaling, we are launching minimum four. So for all four instances, we get eight GB. So it will be thirty-two. Yes. So how can we? Yeah. So you are going out of free data, Sai Prasad. That's why we keep three. We give minimum three. Okay. That's no problem. Don't worry. We have extended free data. I told you right. In some places, when we go out of free data, we have extended free data. Is it? So don't worry about these things. No. You need not to pay the bill. Okay. Sai, so there is a place. Where we put the user data information, uh, that no, right. uh, slash bin, yeah, uh, HTTPD, right. and install. Right. Okay, while typing that or placing there, we made some mistake. Like switch user instead of giving mm. that mm. install, we put triple L. Mm. So I can verify that if I uh, go to the browser and I check, it is not reachable. That, that won't the command in, line. Yeah, in browser it won't work, right? If things are not yeah. doing properly, then it, it won't work. work. So in command line, how I can check like uh, my package is installed correctly or my oh. service is running for that you must know linux okay in, in okay. companies you are not going to do that devops units are going to do that because they deal with linux and all you check from outside graphical you if 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 everything is fine from your side then you inform to devops guys so they go inside of machine that servers and they verify okay is there any devops student of mine here in this class okay So, how to check whether a package is yeah, there or not? Too. Which command we use? Which uh, HTTP? Which command only we use, right? Which yes. the package? Uh, so then we can package. verify whether that uh, thing is there or not. Okay, okay. LS command we use to verify the file is there. Or not. Service is uh, running or not? We how to verify? Uh, service system is running or not? System yes. is a status. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So okay. AWS guys, you okay. need not to worry about these things. These will be taken care by these DevOps guys. They will take care of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. What is the database name we use to store the data for web server? No, no. Database module is different. Okay. That you will understand in when I talk about database section only. Frame server. Okay. So there we use MySQL, you know, DynamoDB, many database types only. That's it. Uh, sir, uh, I have to talk to you. Can I call you later? I mean, yeah. Sure. You you can call. Karo, you can call me at around uh, five p.m. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, can you go to your instance? Any existing instance? What? What? Uh, any instance? What you have created? Yeah. I mean, uh, yes. Actually, what I used to see in my screen, I'm not getting the what the options you are getting. Yesterday, I shared that uh, screenshot. Like your description instance, help check, listener, monitoring. Uh, my what, Let me verify. So. Uh, you posted right. What's your name? Uh, Bibu. What's what's your name? Bibu. 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 Uh, yeah, you are getting right all options. Uh, no, in below actually I'm getting, but uh, as you like how you are getting like instance and then below details, security, networking, storage, oh. uh, status check, monitoring tags. It's coming. Yeah, this is yours, right? No, this is yours actually. Your screen. This is new one. Ah, you are. Acha. Ah, you are here. Ah, don't worry. Here, see by mistake sometimes what we do, we click this one. Old console. In new console, it will show. By mistake, if you click this one, okay, it will take you to the old console. Okay. Okay, old one. So here you can't see those options. That's why. That's a year click here new console. Now here you can see that's a PV earlier that used to be old one. Okay, just verify once. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Any more doubts from anyone? 
Okay, fine. Now let me show you how to delete load balancer. Just go to load balancer. Select that. You can see delete. That's it. you can see the moment you delete immediately that entry will be removed, right? Then you delete launch templates. Just scroll down here. You can see launch template. Tomorrow I'll recreate again. You know, for in first you know ten minutes. You can see delete template. For confirmation type delete. delete. No delete. That's it. Over. Okay. Fine. Uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, see you in tomorrow's class. Same time. Tomorrow we'll discuss remaining part of auto scaling. So today you won't get any notes for that because it's an incompleted topic, right? Yeah, tomorrow right. after tomorrow's class, you'll get the notes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you, sir. <coughs> thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.